What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about Series 1 of the WWF Wrestling Superstars by LJN. Here's my Hulk Hogan, made by LJN. This is Ultimate Warrior. He was not made by LJN. He was made by Tonka. Get the fuck out of here. This is what we're talking about today. This is the first series, so let's get started. Fuck. It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. Okay, before we get started, a little trivia. LJN was founded in 1970 by Jack Friedman, who also founded Jack Pacific, which also made WWF slash E figures and THQ, who were responsible for the WWF slash E games after Acclaim, who for a time owned LJN. Jeez. Some might call this a conspiracy. What is Jack Friedman and the World Wrestling Federation trying to hide, Gorilla? Probably nothing. Anyway, I'm Dan Classic, and this is the LJN Project. It all starts in 1984 with Series 1. Jack Friedman, the founder of LJN, had a knack for knowing what the next big hit in licensing was going to be. The WWF was starting to explode nationwide and into pop culture. With an audience that skewed very young, a toy line was a no-brainer. Enter the LJN Wrestling Superstars line. And check out the fucking variety. Besides the mainline 8-inch series, they had bendies, thumb wrestlers, stretch wrestlers, and the super-sized 16-inch figures as well. But fuck all that. We're talking about the 8-inch mainline series here, folks and specifically Series 1. First up in the series is Andre the Giant. This <clears throat> likeness, if you want to call it that, is based on the late 70s and early 80s Andre the Giant look. Most fans nowadays would be more familiar with the black one-strap singlet Andre the Giant from the end of his career. But even without the signature look, this face on this figure has got to be the worst likeness in the line. And not just because mine is kind of fucked up either. Check out a Series 1 long hair Andre in perfect condition. And if you didn't know any better, you'd be hard pressed to guess who the fuck this is supposed to be. Now I know I just got through blowing smoke up this series ass. And now I'm talking mad shit. Well, the reason for that is the rest of this series has such great likenesses of the WWF superstars that this one sticks out like a sore thumb. And that sucks because I love Andre the Giant, especially 70s Afro Andre. I can't be too mad though, because not only was this all rectified by Series 2, by the end of LJN's time with the license, they had made two more Andres, one in the trunks, and another in the iconic aforementioned one-strap singlet. Next up in the series is Andre's rival from the time, Big John Stud. Stud is the only figure from this line I owned as a child, and as far as I can remember, I never got rid of him. I've looked high and low for this motherfucker and came up with nothing. Luckily, Stud can be yours for under 15 bucks most of the time, so I've actually got three now. I love this figure, not only because of the great likeness of John Studd, but also he shows the scale of the line. Stand him up next to anybody else in the line, and it makes sense. These figures, unlike the ones made by Jack Pacific years later, are in relative scale to one another. Now, they're probably not perfect representations of the height differences, but Andre is bigger than Studd, who's bigger than Hogan, who's bigger than JYD. Take a look at the Jack's Pacific line from over a decade later, and while they have many points of articulation and a shit ton of accessories, they're all the same goddamn size. Rey Mysterio is as big as Triple H, who's as big as the fucking Big Show. What the fuck, guys? In recent years, 
Mattel has got the license and the scale is a bit more in line with real life. And I say a bit because Mattel is still using stock body parts for the majority of its line. Fuckers. Our next contestant is Hillbilly Jim. Don't go messing with this country boy. Mine sadly has no hat and the accessories for these things can hurt you where it counts, so I'm not looking forward to having to replace it. Anyways, he's a good figure for the most part, and with a little TLC and some paint touch-ups, he'll look great, even without the hat that will set me back the better part of 20 bucks. Jesus, I spent less on real hats. Next up is the only alleged murderer in the first series, Jimmy Superfly Snooka. Oh yeah. Hey, wait a minute! Whatever, you heard what I said, blow me, fanboy! My Snooka is kinda shitty looking. He's got no physical damage, save the fact that he can't stand up for shit. But his paint job has issues. Matching the colors on these old figures can be kind of a pain in the ass. So what most folks end up doing is removing the existing paint job and starting all over from scratch. And that's what I'm thinking I gotta do with this Superfly Snooka. One of my all-time favorites is up next, the Junkyard Motherfucking Dog. I love JYD, I love this figure, and I love my figure that I got of him just recently. His paint job looks okay, maybe he could use a touch-up here or there. And he came with the collar and no chain, but I happen to have a length of metal chain that is to scale with my JYD figure. And with the help of some needle nose pliers, my JYD is pretty legit. Never mind the fact that one of the only black guys in the series came with a chain around his neck. That's not awkward at all. I'm sure everyone who sees this figure doesn't take it out of context. Moving on. Moving on to the Iron Sheik. Another all-time favorite of mine. Younger viewers may know him as the potty mouth sheik on social media that has threatened to fuck the asses and make humble many, if not hundreds, of online trolls and wrestlers alike. My Sheik is in great shape. Hardly any paint loss. Shit, he's shiny. The mustache and eyebrows are on point. And look at that likeness. You can't mistake who this is supposed to be. And you didn't get this kind of likeness in toys back in 1984. Shit, you'd be lucky if the figures were wearing the right color clothes. And his partner from the Soviet Union, Nikolai Volkov. Bazooka obsessed. Bazooka, 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 bazooka obsessed. Bazooka. Not that Nikolai Volkov. Bazooka obsessed. The real Nikolai Volkov, with hat no less. I actually got this for a great price too. Which is surprising, because when they look this good and come with their original accessories, you're lucky to get out of there with your O-ring intact, if you know what I mean. And now, the number one villain that you love to hate, or in my case, you just plain loved, Rowdy Roddy fucking Piper. I've done a little more than touch up this Piper. Although he came with the kilt, he had some serious paint issues and was sticky as fuck. Considering this was one of my first attempts at customizing, I think it went pretty well. And that's what matters anyhow. I didn't make him to sell. He's sitting on my shelf, and I think he looks damn good. Finally, the number one good guy hero of the 1980s and current member of the N-Word Order, Hulk Hogan. When I first got him, he was missing some paint here and there and was really only in need of a good cleaning and a touch-up. I went the extra step and painted the boot laces and soles. I just ordered another Hogan that I plan on customizing in the style of SummerSlam 1988, so look forward to that too. And I bet you are wondering where the hell I got that winged eagle belt from. Well, I ordered it and an Intercontinental Championship belt on eBay for 10 bucks. They're made of foam rubber and have a high quality sticker on them taken from a photograph of the actual belt. They connect with Velcro in the back and look great on these figures. 
But Dan, that's not even the proper championship belt for the LJN figures. <laughs> that's not even the proper championship belt for 1984! Fuck you, fanboy. I know that shit. The Winged Eagle is my favorite belt of all time. And the one that myself and millions of motherfuckers around the world think of when 1980s Hogan is brought up. Ah. Uh? Yes, I'll eventually get the proper LJN belt. Oh. And then I'll get the replica of all the other belts that came before it and maybe even after it. Huh? But for now, the Winged Eagle is just fine. 